Good morning. It's Friday morning. Time for Fridays with Frank. It's Scott Cullen here. I'm the editor-in-chief of the Canada Report. And before I bring Frank out, don't forget, like, subscribe, comment, and send Frank your questions. So, Frank, how's it going today and what's on your mind? Uh, it's going pretty good. In terms of the business, I, I think the theme that I want to focus on uh, this morning is profitability. And obvious question from our audience should be, why why that particular topic? Well, it just occurred to me that recently we've been at events where profitability has been a discussion. Uh, and in other cases, profitability has been part of the conversation in our in our talking to some of the most significant dealer organizations in the country. The term profitability keeps coming up. Now let's start with the one that finally woke me up it was Doug Patassi at the POA meeting. Every year, Doug has a, a, a message that he leaves with the audience that he subtly works through the presentation uh, and at the end really hammers it. And his message at the end is profitability is what we have to get done this year. And the, the business was great. The numbers were fantastic. But what Doug was conveying to the audience, we're not making the, the money we used to make. We're doing the numbers. Uh, so what's going on? Uh, and he really didn't quite couch it that way. He just... But he always he's very positive, and we will address this. The other people I spoke to were very concerned about certain manufacturers whose products were no longer, or not, I shouldn't say no longer, were not as profitable as competitive products, which they had available to them. I think part of it uh, can be attributed to inflation, that you're, you're operating on a certain premise, that your margins are gonna hold uh, through, uh, through an, inf of an inflationary cycle. And it appears in some cases, it has not. So if, if we're correct in our observation, then what we would encourage our audience to do is take a good, hard look at profitability in their business. If they did an honest evaluation of the prior year, were the numbers there? And I think they will find if they were, they were certainly not as good. Now, if that's the case, if, if we're correct and dealers verify for themselves in their own businesses that profitability was an issue, what do they do about it? Well, you know, the Tom Johnson model, which everyone revered and used and believed in as, I, as we did, was that, you know, take a look at dealer compensation. The amount of money the dealer takes out of the businesses is, and the, and the guide by uh, Tom was about 10%. Now, if the dealers are going along with the Johnson model, and I think most of them, I think, are, 10% 10, 10 may be too much uh, when you take a look at the costs. And you have to do something about improving profitability. And the biggest thing you can look at, and the first thing you can look at, is are you taking too much money out of the business? Now, that doesn't mean you can't do it. Yes, you can. There are a lot. I'm sure you can look at a lot of different areas in the business say, how do we improve profitability? And I'm not talking, just I'm just talking about reducing people's revenue. Uh, uh, certainly, you don't want to go that route unless you absolutely have to. But there's got to be ways to address it that don't negatively impact the business. That is not easy to do, but also 
what it should alert the dealers is take a look at what their suppliers are doing without saying it are they making any subtle moves which clearly imply that they're cutting expenses and if they are it's just validation uh, of what we're talking about now supporting the the theme uh, or the message that we're trying to convey today about lack of profitability is we heard the same story from manufacturers who took a look last year and saw what their budgets were and said, wow, <laughs> we can't do what we've done before. And they had to, they had to take a hard look at that. Now, it, it didn't reduce their profitability, but it reduced the revenue that they had available to do some of the things that they would like to do, or even get close to doing all of the things they like to do. A proving statement, I believe, will be, you know, at the for all the Japanese manufacturers save Canon, the end of year is March 31. So in uh, May, uh, possibly early June, we'll have the numbers. It will not surprise me to see overall manufacturers in Japan earn less profit last year their profit on a year-over-year -year basis was down i think there are other driving factors here we all know that a3 is suffering at, at the incursion of a4 and dealers are re, are uh, redoing um, installations that they did three four years ago and i think what they're finding is the revenue is not the same I'm, I'm very confident that's the case in virtually all cases. One of the factors is that you can't sell the same mix of A3 and A4 that you sold three or four years ago. You got to use more A4, less revenue. But I would encourage you just to take a look. Look at your own spreadsheets. Look at the numbers. Look at what you've got left after you've made these transactions and say, are we getting the margins that we uh, were used to getting before? And if we are, are we getting the same level of revenue? I, I think they'll find this. No and no is the answer. Uh, and hopefully I'm wrong. I don't want to see anybody go through some angst and anger and pain but I, I also attribute lack of profitability to the reason that so many dealers have sold over these last few years. I think the pandemic was a big part of it. Lack of profitability for the smaller dealers was definitely a huge factor. Uh, that's basically my story for today, Scott.